I'm Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, uh, Warren Buffett is often said in many of the books that I've read on Warren Buffett is to look at your investing lifespan as a punch card with 20 punches in it. In other words, every stock purchase you buy or sell or every ETF or mutual fund or buying a home, selling a home, buying an investment property, uh, consider that to be one clip out of that punch card and to use your 20 punches extremely wise wisely time is not on your side you've got room there to make a few mistakes in your in your lifetime there but not many not as many as people think you better make each one of those 20 count you might miss out on a few make a couple of bad decisions we all do but you better be pretty guarded and pretty calculated on those investments and purchases you make. I would expand it even a little bit further. I would say, let's say you've got a 25 uh, punch card with 25 slots in it. I would expand it to things like getting married, having kids, of course, buying or selling uh, properties every time you buy or sell a house, buying a new car, any, any major purchases or, or sales uh, financial transactions would be another punch in there. Your career, uh, what you just choose to, to go into as a career or starting your own business would be another punch. And you've only got so many, you better make them count. Time isn't on your side. You know, one of my early mentors used to say, used to instill in me that, you know, really successful people learn from their mistakes and don't repeat them and minimize how many mistakes they make in their lives marriage divorce you know jobs careers and then of course investing buying homes selling homes buying investments buying stocks and ETFs you got to make each one of those count you've got a room for a, a few mistakes in there I've made a couple I've blogged about a few mistakes I've had in the stock market in my early years uh, I haven't made those mistakes for well over a decade and a half now but chasing the wrong type of companies and stocks but you learn from those and you the real successful people don't make a whole lot of mistakes now I want to reason I want to bring this up is because in the media here I've seen a number of these stories the media just loves these I think this was either in CTV or global it came through my daily email that I get from our media liaison that gives us everything that's in the news and I've seen a couple of these stories here recently it was a story of a couple in their mid 30s in North Vancouver who bought a townhouse three years ago got into a bidding war on it uh, paid a big price for this townhouse but it was their dream home more townhouse than they needed, of course. Now it's coming to, to the realization we never needed a 2,000 square foot home. We probably could have gotten away with about 12 or 1,300 square feet. Locked in a variable rate mortgage, of course, at about 1.3 or 1.4%. And now that has ballooned up to 6.5%. And we're, we're in the process now of selling the townhouse. Uh, we didn't want to, but we have no choice. Well, really, they did have a choice. As it turns out, you know, the increased mortgage payments, which have more than doubled, is crimping their lifestyle, which I, I understand. You've gone from a 1.5 to a 6.5, so their payments are substantially higher. But, you know, we could probably make the payments happen, but not to live the lifestyle we really want. And that went on to talk about going out for dinners a few times a week taking a couple of trips to Hawaii or Mexico in the winter, birthday parties they talked about, Canucks tickets, uh, uh, you know, nice bottle of wine here and there and all that other good stuff. Hey, I get it. But what I think they, oh, and the plan was they've, they're selling the, co the townhouse now and they are going to rent. And uh, renting, which they haven't obviously gotten into quite yet, they're just in the preliminary stages of selling their, co their townhouse, and then they'll wade into that rental market. But they decided we don't need 2,000 square feet, we're going to rent something around 12 or 1,300, which should save us some money. Well, for sure, it'll save you a little bit of money monthly, but of course, you don't own anything now. You're going to make your landlord, uh, uh, that money's going to your landlord, you're renting, you're just buying time with that. Uh, and that's not going to be a fun place to be in this current rental market. But the point I want to make here is I don't think these people realize that they're really 
compounding their troubles here and they've just taken out three punches on their punch card and potentially four if they ever get back into the market down the road which is dangerous a lot of people never do they sell they take uh, their money and rent uh, once they're in that renter quicksand that I've often talked about once you're in there for a few years as rents continue to skyrocket a lot of times they never get out uh, and that could happen to them but they just hit a punch card when they bought the townhouse they're gonna take another punch card when uh, punch in their card when they sell it they're gonna take another punch now as they rent a new place and potentially a fourth punch you know it these add up these mistakes they start to add up and I don't think this couple is even aware of it I know they're not because at the end of the article they overall at first they were quite disappointed in how things have turned out and we're selling our dream home but then at the end they turned it and said well you know what we didn't need this much space anyways we're gonna be fine in a 1200 square foot rental if you can even find one they haven't even gotten to that point yet um, and we can enjoy our lives you know we can go on those vacations down to Mexico and Hawaii and you know get a nice gift for birth friends for birthday parties and go to those Canucks games uh, and uh, you know go for those dinners two or three nights uh, a week which is fine that's obviously your priorities are lifestyle over making good financial decisions because if I had to counsel them on this they're in a bad position here but what I would say is you guys have already made some bad decisions here. Why compound them even more by now selling? Well, first off, on the way in, of course, they had the PTT of $20,000 or so, a set of conveyancing costs. Now, of course, they're gonna have to sell it. They're looking at $30,000, $35,000 to sell the, uh, the townhouse. Another set of conveyancing costs. I think there's little to no money. I think they're actually gonna take a loss on this sale. Uh, <laughs> You know they're just kind of compounding their problems here what I probably would have told them is I say listen you're in a tough spot here but you know what rather than compound your problems why not just ride it out here a little bit make some sacrifices the market is not very good right now for a 2,000 square foot townhouse in North Vancouver uh, which is at a million five or a million six uh, purchase price you know why not ride it out a year or two make some sacrifices unfortunately you're gonna to have to cut back on those dinners cut backs on on the Canucks tickets but over the long term that would be probably the best decision to make even though this townhome is probably too much house for you but let the market recover the other thing is you've taken the pain on the interest rates now they're probably gonna start coming down next year it reminds me of the analogy that one of my sports psychology coaches used to give me when I was younger growing up in Toronto playing hockey and about the pain threshold and getting through you know your your mindset to push through to get better results and to move forward athletically mentally that kind of thing and he used this analogy of swimming across the English Channel and you know you get across start swimming across the English Channel you get about halfway there and I'm getting exhausted I don't know how much I can continue on you'd get another quarter of the way there and you're three quarters of the cross and you're you're just exhausted I can't take it anymore you turn around and swim all the way back when if you just would have pressed on another 20 percent further you would have made it to the other side that's exactly what these people are doing in my opinion anyways with this they've got themselves in a bad pickle here that you know they they overpaid for the home and I don't know all the circumstances with that they bought too much house nobody I guess told them that that 1.3 or 1.4 percent variable has nowhere to go but up if they were my clients I would have told them that that hey lock in a, take advantage of these variables but they're not going to be around much longer they're going to slowly start going up here in time and nobody saw of course the Bank of Canada was saying interest rates were going to be low for long a long time and then two months later turned around and started the first of 10 hikes nuts but they're just kind of compounding their troubles here and I want people to just understand look at your life like Warren Buffett says with a, a punch card that you get 20 punches or 25 life punches with make you have to make them count and you can't make too many mistakes there's not a lot of room for error here there isn't in life I know people will say times on your side and all that other stuff it's not it's a lie maybe that worked 25 years ago it doesn't 
You can make a few mistakes here and there in your life, absolutely. But if you start making three, four, compounding like these people are doing, next thing you know, these people, I don't know, I just don't think it's gonna work out very well for these people because I've seen it over and over in my career. They'll get into that renter treadmill, into that quicksand, they've taken their payments down now to something more comfortable that they can enjoy a, a, a nicer lifestyle with. But the price, to purchase something is gonna to continue to go up. Interest rates will drop, start probably start coming down by maybe late 2024. So condo market will start to pick up again in the townhouse market. That's the way it works. Meanwhile, the rental market is not a good place to be. I don't know how much money they're really gonna be saving in the rental market. They even said they hadn't really started looking yet. Well, they're gonna be in for a shock on what three or four thousand dollars is going to get them it's not going to be much and once you get into that renter treadmill you get comfortable in there prices keep continue to go up your rents keep going up next thing you know you just cannot save the down payment to get back into the market and you're out permanently the door has been shut on you and then you go on to the vancouver sun and globe and mail and start complaining that's what a lot of these people start to do when you're the one to blame I always remember another one of my mentors used to say that he could sit down with someone for three minutes and say, listen, give me your life, your, your, your timeline here from the time you were in high school to now in three minutes or less. And he could pick out within th two to three minutes if this person was successful or not just by where some of the life choices they made. And unfortunately, people make a lot of bad life choices and decisions. You're allowed a few but they compound their problems with this. They just did not, this couple did not get good counsel on what they bought, the mortgage rates they locked in at, buying too much house, not expecting interest rates to ever go up. And now in my opinion, again, they're compounding their problem by selling in a down market or at least a slower market um, and renting indefinitely in this crazy rental market. It's like swinging the English channel, you get three quarters of the way there, they should have just buckled down, made some sacrifices for the next couple of years, kept that townhouse, and they'd be far better off. Now they're just adding another punch or two out of that 25 punch card. And each one of those counts, and they just, they're gonna waste three or four here, no problem, just in this one transaction. I'm Owen Biglin. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.